Right, I'll pick up in chapter 17, verse 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman which, and of the beast that carried her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, on which the woman sits. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. There is the mention of the seven mountains, or seven, it's the space to talk about seven empires. Now, it's mentioning seven of them. Now, who? maybe you could guess who some of them are. Five are fallen. Five no longer exists. I, I, can go, I, probably, I can give you, I believe, all of them. Egypt, Babylon, Syria, Medo-Persia, Greece. Those five empires. And it says that one is. That would be during this time, which would be Rome, the Roman Empire. And the other is not yet come. That's the Antichrist revived Roman Empire. That's what it's talking about. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven. He's almost like his own person. He's like his own, he's like his own empire almost by himself. He's he's of the seven, but yet he's almost like the eighth. He's like the he's like the eighth, but he's of the seven. If you read in the book of Daniel, you read about the seven heads and ten horned beast again mentioned it, but then it talks about the ten horns, but then it talks about eleven eleventh horn, and a little horn showing up. Which is the picture of it was just talking about the Antichrist. It talks about a little horn showing up. So instead of ten, it's like almost like eleven. So it's almost like he's kind of like he's of them, but he's also like his own in a way. He's like he's different. He's different than they are almost. It's like kind of like that. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Ten, the ten horns are ten kings. It's a ten nation confederacy. These ten kings are going to be joined together as one, and the Antichrist is going to be their leader, and they're going to give their power to him. Here it is. Verse 13. They, these have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast, the Antichrist. They shall wage war with, war, with, war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are cho called the chosen, are called and chosen and faithful. He's talking about stupid and bold. They, these people are going to—they're they, going to join up together. This this revival and empire, this army, which is a powerful and big army. They can defeat anybody on earth, but they're going to fight. They're going to be so bold that they're going to try to fight God. They're going to sit there and see God and say, "Hey, I got an idea. Let's fight Him. We can beat anybody. We're the, we're the Antichrist. You know, we're the whatever the whatever they call themselves in that time. We're the revival Roman empire. We're more powerful than the Roman Empire. We're we're the biggest, baddest army and nation in the world that the world's ever seen. We, they can't nobody beat us. Let's fight, you know. Let's join up. Let's fight. Beat them up. Let's join up and let's fight God and we'll and we'll win. You talk about you talk about stupid. You talk about really dumb and arrogant. And you talk about wicked too. And so you talk about wickedness. You talk about bold wickedness, rebellion. That's it right there. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, which where the horse is, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the Woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That's or it's mentioned it's talking about Babylon. Great city Babylon. So it's and it talks about it talks about the uh the, the revival of empire is gonna hate the whore. It's gonna hate the religious system. Why? Because it almost seems like deep down the even the world in a way hates compromisers. Hates you know, hates compromisers, hates uh, false religion because it's not real. They'll do whatever they they'll do whatever they can to please whatever makes them makes them the most money makes or gives them those advantages. They'll do whatever they can to please everybody. That's not really real. So deep down they'll even hate her because he's fake. Because it's not a real religion. It's fake, and they hate, they'll even turn against her later.
Chapter 18. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the glory, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the mer merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that she, you receive, receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double up unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled full of her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. Judgeth, judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city Babylon the mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn for, over her for no man buyeth any their merchandise any more the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. And the fruits of thy soul, lusted, that thy soul lusted after, <coughs> are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The, the merchants of these things which were made rich by the herd shall stand afar off from the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city with, that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches are come to naught, and every shipmaster, and all of his company and ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and cried with a loud, uh, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were, were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she, is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall, shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the, voices, and the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of the millstone of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in all, no more at all in thee, and the light of a candle shall sound no more at all in thee, and the voice of a of the bridegroom and, and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all that were slain among, slain upon the earth.